Hello and welcome to another training video for Enlight POS powered by Dark. Today we're going to be looking at working with barcodes on the detailing screen where we create our tickets and invoices. So I hope that you've looked at the first video on working with the with the detailing screen because it covers a lot of the fundamentals that we're not going to touch on on this one. It, this one builds on the last one. So please take a look at that one if you haven't so that you can learn the basics and then join us for this one. So to get to the detailing screen, we're going to go through customer walk-in, enter my PIN. We're going to look for a customer and then we're going to go into new invoice. So this is my detailing screen. And this time we're going to be looking at specifically how to work with barcodes. So you'll probably notice that this screen might look a little bit different than the one that's configured for you. If, for example, the customer notes and the customer warnings are showing up here, if that's something that you like, just let your support team know and they can configure it for you. We're going to be working with the little barcode field right here, which again is something that you might not have enabled by default. You just have to let us know and we'll enable it for you. To work with barcodes, we would simply pick up our scanner and we'd scan our heat seal barcode on an item. Would enter it into this little box. It would automatically push enter for us. I'm doing it with the keyboard um, because I don't have a scanner configured right now. But at the moment that we scan it, it'll create an empty item. So you can see here, we have our barcode that we scan down here, and then we have an empty item that's created here. So for this empty item, I'm going to make it a skirt. I'm going to say that it's a purple skirt and that it's striped and that it's made of cotton. So all of the details that we capture when we register a barcode are stored with that barcode. So the next time that I retrieve this barcode, it's going to have all of this information. And we can add additional notes if you have this field configured. Again, this is something that you probably won't see on yours by default, but I can add additional garment notes here. So I can put this is a garment note. We'll add that here. And then I can continue adding items. So if I wanted to add a second item, but I enter the same barcode, the system is going to stop me. It's going to tell me that this barcode is already in use. It's already in this invoices. We have all of the basic validation. So if you try to enter a duplicate barcode, if you try to enter a barcode that belongs to a different customer, all of these things are going to get stopped by the system. You're going to see an error message for it. Furthermore, we can require the different modifiers that you see down here. So for example, if you require color and pattern and material or designer, all of these we can require in the system so that when your employees are working, if they miss one, the system won't let them enter the next item until they've added all of the required modifiers. Just let us know which ones you need. You can mix and match. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. So you can only require color or only require color and material or require all of them. Up to you. Just let us know how your business operates and we'll configure the system accordingly. Okay, I'm going to create one more item here. So we're going to change our barcode slightly. Here's our empty item. There is one exception to duplicate barcodes, and that's whenever you're tailoring something. So if I'm tailoring these pants, the system will allow a duplicate barcode for the dry cleaning and the tailoring. So for example, we're going to say these are blue, plain, and they're cotton, and they also need to be tailored. So as we did in the previous video, we hit our repair button. I'm going to say yes, include cleaning, and we're going to click pants hem. So we can see that it added the tailoring item. And we've got our dry cleaning and slash tailoring down here so that we know that this needs two things done to it. And the barcode is the same. So we don't need a separate barcode for tailoring. For tailoring, the system will allow a duplicate barcode. So now that we've got all these items created, I'm just going to save this ticket and then we're going to retrieve these items. We're going to hit our handy little print button down here. Okay, our ticket was created ticket 826. So now this ticket is in our store. So we can't reuse those barcodes because the barcodes are already inside an open order. So I'm going to go quickly close out this ticket so that we can reuse it again. This part you won't see. We'll, we'll take you through. You can watch the videos on pick and pay on the pick and pay section so that you can see how to close out a ticket so that that inventory leaves your store and you can reuse those barcodes. 
Okay, so now we're back here at the invoicing screen, and I've already gone and closed out the ticket that we just created so that we can reuse these barcodes so we can retrieve them for the first time. So it's the same process. The garment comes back into the store, and I'm going to scan the heat seal. So our first one was this barcode, and you can see here's our skirt. Here are the items that I had, or the modifiers that I had added to it, and then here is our garment note. And then let's add number two here. Here are our pants that we had added with the modifiers that we had included before. And note that it comes back as a dry cleaning item, not as a tailoring item, even though we had also tailored it last time. So that is how you register and receive barcodes. A few important things with barcodes. You you will have to, if you're, if you're already using barcodes, then, then you know this, you don't have to worry about it. If you are moving from printed tags to barcodes, it is important that you take a look at your price list so that you modify any items that have more than one piece so that they are one piece. So for example, if you have an item in your price list called two-piece suit, it's important that you go back into your price list when you're moving to heat seal and change it so that one is suit jacket and the other one is suit pants and they both have a quantity of one. It's very important with heat seal that you maintain a one-to-one -one relationship with the garments because then it, it defeats the point if you try to have more than one piece tied to one barcode. The idea with the barcodes is that you can track each individual garment throughout your store and throughout your processes. So whenever you're transitioning from printed tags or pre-printed tags to heat seal barcodes, it's important that you modify your price list accordingly. And of course, that's something that we can help you do. Just let us know that that's the case and we'll work with you to correct anything that needs to be adjusted on your price list. Okay, we're gonna look at one more feature involving barcodes and that is the auto barcodes. I'm going to clean this up and I have to make a small configuration change to our store. I will see you right back here. All right, so I've made the change I needed to make to my store and now we're ready to look at auto barcodes. So the way this works is if you have one of those rolls of, of heat seal barcodes and they come in a number sequence, there is a faster way to register them with this with this mode enabled and the way that this works is first I'm just going to add a few items so here we have four items that we've added to our invoice and previously you saw that to register the barcode we were entering the barcode number first then it was creating the empty item we would register all of the details and then the item would be registered to that barcode. Here the process is a little bit different. So I can still enter all these items and I can still add the details to them the same way that we were doing before. But instead of creating the barcode first, entering the barcode first so that we see that empty item, because I'm working on a sequence, I can enter my number here. So let's say that we're starting with this barcode and this is note that it is alphanumeric. It has an H prefix. So we can do this if your barcodes have a prefix or a suffix that that involves letters, but it must have a number sequence to the left or the right of it, right? So it begins with the number sequence or ends with the number sequence. In this case, this begins with an H and ends with the number sequence that's at 255. So I've added these items and when I'm ready, I enter the first barcode on my list or the next available barcode from my roll, and I press enter, and then the system assigns the first one, which was 255, this is when we entered, to the first item that we entered into the invoice, and then it's going up the sequence. So here's 256, 257, and 258. This is a little bit faster if you're working with, with these kinds of barcodes. It's just another option that we have. If you need this enabled, just talk to your support team. They'll be happy to enable this for you. Do remember though that if, if your barcodes do have letters, it has to be either a prefix or a suffix. It gets much more difficult to work with this if the, the letters are in the middle or a part of the number, okay? We have to have a clean number sequence for this to work. After these are added, I handle this the same way as if I had done it the, the previous way that we had discussed. I can come over here and print, and it's gonna create my invoice exactly the same way as we had done before. So that's how you work with 
HCL barcodes in our system. We looked at creating barcodes and registering them. We looked at working with tailoring, which again is the only exception to duplicating a barcode. And we looked at how to retrieve the barcodes, where to enter them to retrieve an item that's coming back into our store. And you saw how it brings back all of the modifiers and details that we had registered with that garment the first time we received it. We also looked at auto barcodes and how we can quickly generate several barcodes um, based on a number sequence and the number of items that are present in a ticket or invoice. Again, if some of this didn't make sense and we didn't go over all of the buttons in the detailing section, note that there is a video prior to this one that covers all of the basics. If you haven't seen that one, please go back and take a look at that one so that you can understand some of the things that we had already covered. From everyone here at Dark, thank you so much for your time and your attention, and thank you for your business. We hope to see you soon. See you on the next one. Bye.